In online circles, Arcanum was often said to be a definite classic, perhaps even a masterpiece, alongside such games as the original Baldur's Gate trilogy and Planescape Torment. In reality, however, it's probably closer to Fallout 1 and 2 in terms of how it plays and in terms of how the game is remembered. That is not to say Arcanum and Fallout are bad games, but there are definite flaws that perhaps not every modern RPG enthusiast would be able to stomach. What Arcanum is though, is a 10 out of 10 in terms of its setting and context in which gameplay takes place. So there is something of value for those curious enough to see the game through to its conclusion, and there is a lot to appreciate here. Perhaps the most successful thing about Arcanum is its world building, and how it is presented in game, even though an isometric perspective and tile based maps couldn't really do it justice. Nevertheless, the world really comes alive through dialogues and begrudgingly sparse details that make it believable. Characters talk just like you would think they would in a Victorian setting where technology has just started to advance exponentially with old ways of magic slowly fading into obscurity. And you can see it all, from beggars in the slums grabbing your arm asking for coin each time you pass by, to the higher and more affluent echelons of society, who as expected are not as noblesse oblige as one would like, exploiting their servants and throwing tantrums when you don't want to part with your hard fought elven tombstones for a pittance. All because old and elven is fashionable right now in Tarant the self-appointed capital of all of Arcanum. It's these exact people you are asked to protect as the reincarnation of the Living One, as one of your companions tells you. But your fate is your own, and so you may screw them literally and figuratively and set off on your quest for power disregarding any of that nonsense. It's because of this Arcanum hasn't been lost to time. To this day, it's still the best freeform role-playing experience you can have in a video game, and it's actually pretty impressive that this is the case, seeing how some of the other aspects of the game are clearly unfinished. The catch is the gameplay itself, and especially its pacing. It's quite likely that a brand new player trying out Arcanum would be absolutely stonewalled in the second major dungeon of the game, the home of the Black Mountain Clan. Unless you know what to expect, you will come unprepared and underleveled, and it doesn't help that only in this dungeon the most useful spell in the game called Harm is not that harmful. In particular, the stone golems have resistances to it, and it's not like a sword or a gun would help you out either. What would help is a large number of companions, but in order to get that at this point in the game, you would have had to specialize in charisma. It's my guess that this dungeon is responsible for obliterating any desire to continue for most players on their first ever playthrough, unless they follow some sort of a guide, and that's really no fun to begin with. With the options that the game provides you, you'd feel compelled to try and come up with your own build, and unfortunately such theory crafting can lead to some very suboptimal choices, especially considering that you can't respect, and that gear you can find or buy on your travels is usually not that powerful or useful. For most builds you get your power for spending character points on level ups. There are 16 magic schools in the game with 5 spells in each, as well as their counterpart, the technological disciplines, which are focused more on crafting. In general, it seems that spells are more interesting than tech, since they allow you to interact with the world in an emergent gameplay sort of way. And for me, tech has made an impression that it doesn't allow for the same scope of manipulation. For example, there is no speak with the dead for tech or teleport, charm animal and so on. So weirdly enough, you don't miss out on anything options wise if you go magic over tech, but you do if you try a tech build. You potentially could also sidestep all that and focus on general skills like going strictly archery or melee, or just a persuasion build, which would make an interesting roleplay angle and you would still be able to use trains for fast travel as well as trade with mages and inventors alike. Archers and riflemen are deadly in particular. I think this is because of how real-time combat mode is set up. Action points they get seem to be tied to the game's frame rate. so if you have a computer capable of 60 frames a second, you will have a lot of trouble with archer mobs, but you can also do the same thing if you wish. This bug is negated by entering tactical combat mode, and it is here where issues with combat become apparent. Both of the combat modes can be frustrating in their own way. Tactical is super slow for big packs of mobs, and real-time can be uncontrollable and heavy on micromanagement. It's also quite unfortunate that you cannot control your party members directly, you can only issue basic orders, but you wouldn't be able to make them cast specific spells. This usually results in mages rushing into melee above all, but at least they have enough sense to cast healing spells on themselves and yourself in most cases. Because of all this, combat always feels messy and unsatisfying, so you'd rather avoid it, but the game has a lot of mandatory dungeons, which not only look the same, but also have nothing besides sheer dungeon to them. 
Maybe it's because of the tile-based nature of the maps, so I wonder if there exists somewhere in a different dimension a version of Arcanum in which the devs decided to draw the maps instead, like in Baldur's Gate or Planescape, and I wonder if it plays any better as a result. One of the more memorable locations in Arcanum, the elven city of Quintara, uses both tiles and drawn elements, and it's quite gorgeous compared to the rest of the game, so much so that the place actually looks somewhat believable as to how it would be in the setting. One thing I noticed about Arcanum that I thought peculiar is the amount of completely missable content in the game. Some quests can be pretty intricate and yet really difficult to find. Same thing goes for the companions, of which there are about 30 in the game, some of them even voiced. And not just voiced for a checkmark either, I was not ready for quality of voice acting in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you're not as ignorant and as bland as you look, stranger. You've at least the brain power to conceive an amusing response. Nicely done. You've not the barbarian upbringing I expected. It is so good at times that it feels wrong with the visuals. The disparity of quality is just that huge. I think it speaks most of all about the confidence the dev team had in their writing, which, unless talking to nameless NPCs, never failed to deliver. My personal favorites are the main villain and the fellow named Franklin Payne, an adventurer who can never quite retire, and when asked about his adventures, tells them with such infectious enthusiasm that you cannot help but smile. So, this was the Stillwater Giant. He was my quarry. Nothing else mattered. My trusted blunderbuss, old Mary, was all botched up. So, I had only a small knife with which to battle the mythical beast. The fight raged for what seemed like hours. More than a few times, I thought I was dead as mutton. What happened? Somehow, I got the upper hand. And just as I was about to dispatch the beast once and for all, the bugger changed back into a bloody rabbit and hopped away. Oh, dash it. Of all the bad luck. It's no surprise then that cities and villages tend to be the most fun parts of the game. NPCs and towns have schedules to adhere to. Most merchants are selling only during the day, for example, at night they lock up the shop and go to bed, only to have you break in and steal their merchandise to fence off later in a different part of the continent altogether. And that's how I got my 50,000 gold, all with this one simple trick. Those poor scrawl merchants got trapped every day right in front of their noses. Paralyzed in their sleep as the ugliest creatures in all of Blackroot come into their bedroom, making as much noise as possible. What's interesting is that there are many more ways to go about this. You can even find ways to shorten lifespans prematurely without breaking any laws. And so it can be very fun to find ways to game the system, even if there is no real reason to do it most of the time. If a cast dominate will on an NPC that would let you fast travel, for example, and then let them free in a way that they don't aggro, it's possible to escape the inescapable void many of the characters in the game tell you about. There are so many fun things like that in this game, which makes it very replayable, not only from the point of game mechanics, builds, uh, sequence breaking, but also in terms of story. Many of the major side quests in the game have consequences that you get to see during the ending, not to mention the possibility of doing an evil playthrough with the Dark Elves or making a character with really low intelligence, which will result in different and hilarious dialogue as well as journal entries. If only I wasn't so new to the Panari religion. Follow me, idiot! I mean, <laughs> oh living one. This evil stuff came in and be escaped and stopped. <laughs> Did he die? I've only scratched the surface in my playthrough, and I could see myself returning in a year or two to see how things would work out that time, especially considering that I have doomed most of the places I visited on the continent of Arcanum. Even though you were able to free Shrouded Hills from the grip of Lucan and his henchmen, the presence of the ghost of Betsy Toon kept the mine from ever producing any quality ore again. Eventually, the town withered and died. Durnon crumbled into obscurity, the dwarven clan splintered, and a bloody war followed. The Bedokan continued to live in the dark fens. You get a very believable and interesting world to be your playground. It's fun to uncover its mysteries, to see firsthand the incursion of technology in a society that undergoes an industrial revolution, and then immerse yourself in such a place. And even then, if you share your experience with others, you might find out that what you've experienced is completely unique. Arcanum is nothing flashy, certainly not the prettiest game even by 2001 standards, 
the combat is hilariously broken, but the game can still be surprisingly awesome in spite of it. It has a musical score that accomplishes a truly Herculean task. It ties the whole game together, painting it with such unmistakable melancholy. It is existential and hopeless, depicting an age, nations and people clinging desperately to the glory of old, only to be eventually wiped out by the encroachment of the new. Is it worth keeping these pieces of glass? These ideals, reminders of how things used to be. A sweet fantasy protecting your mind from the morbidity of the times. There is no other game like this, and I wish there was more of it, and better, but we probably won't see Arcanum 2 for a very long time. The closest thing we have is Tim Kane sharing his philosophy on making games, and what he still has from the design document on his YouTube channel, a link for which I will provide in the description. I thank you for watching my video, you can find all of my watch from the playthrough on this channel, as well as future streams, you are very welcome to come say hello, all of them go live on YouTube. I am currently playing Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines with mods, waiting for Baldur's Gate 3 to come out, and so I send you off, wishing that your day be... Absolutely fantastic!